Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and uh, welcome back to the channel, everybody. This video is the third in a series of videos about the sovereign citizen known as Roger Hillegas. So, to recap, this is a uh, competency hearing to determine whether or not Roger Hillegas is competent enough to stand trial. And yes, he has been uh, declared competent enough to stand trial, and but he has already declared that he's going to go pro se, well not pro se in his own words, because he's a living man and all that, uh, but he is going to get rid of his lawyers, he's going to, uh, well, just gum up the works as much as he can, so let's go ahead and continue from where we left off. And by the way, the uh, links uh, to the previous videos will be down in the description box below. Mr. Prasad, any thoughts on, you can see the court really is, it wants to thank and thank very much the assistance you've given to this point in your office um, and, and excuse you from any further role. On the other hand, I'm just wrestling with the idea that I want to make sure that Mr. Williams is has the opportunity because he's in custody. And if he were out of custody, it would probably be a little bit of a different analysis. But he's in custody, which means he only has so much time out of his um, uh, Cell or his block or so much access to the law library or so much access to do things that people at Liberty would otherwise have to do So any thoughts there and I'll hear from Mr. Stegi and I'll hear from Mr. Hillegas. Go ahead, sir um, I think thank you, Your Honor. With respect to uh, I believe the court's concerns is to do with the filing um, As I think was laid out in our memorandum Even if as appointed by standby counsel all we can do is standby counsel's offer advice We cannot participate in the filings that Mr. Hillegas wants to make um, for I think the reason we made pretty clear in that memory. Yeah, that's not really a standby counsel's role, is it? Except, yeah, and that's that's the issue. I think you, you, regardless if you appoint a standby counsel to serve as an advisory role or leave us, Mr. Hillegas will still face um, those same needs to file from the jail. Um, that's not saying that it's an impossible task. I think he has provided with me with many documents that have not been filed, given that it's been a standby. Um, counsel solely for the purpose of the of the competency proceedings, which I made clear to Mr. Hilligus, and the court knows and so those are not filed, but I I'm aware they were extensive documents. Um, I'm confident if given away Mr. Hilligus would be able to get those filed with the court um, without the assistance of of myself, which I cannot provide anyway in that state my counsel to get those filed. So your your view would be that your role would end today? I, I believe Mr. Hilligus has made it very clear where he stands on the okay. continued participation. Of my office. Right. Please, please up seat. I'm here for Mr. Elias. I'm here for Mr. Stegi. So, Mr. Elias, what your counsel wants, what I think you want, is for the court to excuse uh, Mr. Prasad, the Washington County Public Defender's Office, for any further um, involvement in this case on your behalf. Is that what you'd like the court to do? That's correct. They're, they have not really provided much assistance at all. Like I said, I've asked for witnesses to be subpoenaed to this hearing. I've asked for evidence subpoenaed to speak them. In fact, there's so much evidence that's being withheld by the prosecutor's office. I filed what's called a writ of cert. Hold on one second. Let's let's stay on track, though. But none of uh, the evidence that's relevant to this trial has been withheld from you. It is uh, all in the care of your public defender, which uh, makes me wonder why you haven't asked uh, your public defender for any of the files that were left in his care. Because if you knew the procedure, then you would have known that the public defender would have already asked for this, and uh, you it would, it would have made this thing so much easier for you. If, if you're going to tell me all the reasons why there should not be a claim, why there's no victim, why there's no, no process. Um, I'm, talking um, about, I'm talking about the exculpatory evidence that's being withheld up to this, case, up we to might, this point. We might get there in a, in a minute or two, but right now the question is, does the court thank and excuse Mr. Well, Prasad? I've asked him to also subpoena the information from Missouri where I was unlawfully detained. And so he has not been any help to me so I, I, I do not need their assistance they're okay. not really assisting me at all okay then understood mr stake anything you'd like to add on that issue just i found myself in room with mr prasad given i think the um wrongness 
who would be concerned about doing violence to the defendant's desire to represent himself, sort of forcing him to have standby counsel. The court's concerns about being able to file things, I think. Um, Damageable? Oh, for sure. I mean, look at his history. I mean, he is one of the, he is a prolific e-filer historically, right? So I don't think that's an issue. The court's concern, and, and I'm happy to um, brief this issue, this, this issue of his access to the file or his file while in custody, I would suggest two things. One, we don't really know that much about it. I think we're presuming that that he would have limited access. I think a hearing might be in order on that. I, you know, I'm aware that the defendants have uh, tablets uh, in the jail, and, and Mr. Hillius certainly would not be the first or, or an unusual pro per detained uh, litigant. So, right. so the shadow has been this before. COVID, COVID era. Yes. That's new. Um, um, uh, we have somebody who uh, left the community and then was brought back against his will, and he's now not at liberty. And we also have somebody who um, uh, we have a trial date coming right down the track here. Right. So we have a lot going on that we have to make some of the decisions on pretty quickly. Yes. Uh, to use the courts where I think that's completely manageable by uh, sheriffs staff at the jail. I mean, frankly put, he doesn't have a whole lot else to do but, but prepare for trial. I know also that, you know, since this case uh, has developed, we're much more um, skilled at using electronic discovery. I mean, the entirety of this case is available in electronic form. So I would not want, nor I suggest that the court um, is detained status and pro per status that that would be a a, um, a cognizable barrier to self representation or the trial date for that. Well, as to the first thing the court agrees as to whether we're still looking at the August twenty seventh trial or twenty eighth trial date, we're going to talk about that shortly. Okay. All right. Then, without further ado, Mr. Prasad, you're excused from further involvement in this case. Thank you and to your office for the work you've done to this point. Wish you a pleasant afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. I bet you he's sitting under his breath. Thank goodness I don't have to deal with this idiot anymore. If he wants to act like a soft heart and go pro se, well, that's his little problem. I bet that's what he's thinking right now. <laughs> So let's, let's get our list of things we have to work on out and so we can both be tracking at the same time. And um, Mr. Ogis, I'll do my best to call on you if I would like your thoughts or insights on something. And if you have something else you want to address the court, let me know and I'll, I'll often give you a chance to speak or I might say, hold that thought, I'll get back to you in a minute. As I will with Mr. Stake. I'd so, like to object to Mr. Shady's um, re referencing me as a pro per or self-represented. And of course, here it comes. He's going to bring this little topic up, which is not relevant to the trial itself, nor relevant to this hearing. So why even do it? Why even bring this up? It's just word game semantics that he's going to use from this point on. I present myself as a living man. I do not represent the fiction. I am not a fiction. I'm not a corpse. I'm not a transmitting utility. I am the living man. I'd ask him to define what he means by transmitting utility in this particular scenario, but I don't think even he'd understand it. Because uh, really what he's just spouting off is the, the so standard sovereign citizen script anyway, but I've never heard the transmitter part, so that's fairly new to me. I am not pro per, pro se, I do not represent myself, I present myself as a living man. So I object to the use of the word pro per, pro se, self-represented litigant. That is not who I am. Thank you. All right, well let me, make, let me respond to that because you will hear both the court and Mr. Segi through, throughout this trial refer to you interchangeably as self-represented litigant, pro per, pro se, 
We're not doing that to be disrespectful of your views, but because you want to be identified as somebody presenting yourself as opposed to self-represented, you, you, I understand your view. You, you do not have to reaffirm that every time we use that phrase. It's, it's noted, but we're not, we're not going to change the way we refer to people. That's the way the statute read, the rules read. I, I would object to the statutes. Statutes and codes are not law under the Clearfield Doctrine. Hey, dumbass, and I'm going to continue to call, call you dumbass because that's exactly what you are because you've got to understand that you've got to provide what's relevant to the case. And the Clearfield Doctrine covers uh, corporate law. And uh, guess what? You are not under a corporate trial right now. You are in a criminal proceeding. And the Clearfield Doctrine refers to contracts, which basically means you're trying to uh, use the old contract argument right here, which is not going to exactly fly with this kind of procedure right here. Like I said, criminal proceedings, you numb nuts. And you know what a corporate law would f fall under? More or less, civil proceedings. Well, at least be a branch of civil proceedings. But, at any rate, you're a complete moron. Which is in Black's Law Dictionary, Clearfield versus the United States. It's a dictionary, not a law book. Just because it says law on it doesn't mean it is a law book. Since governments have chosen to incorporate, they do not have, they have to follow the same rules of corporations. So under the Clearfield Doctrine, Contextual definition word plays, dude. The word incorporate means to gather together, pretty much. And you know what? It has nothing really to do with corporations, you dumbass! This court lacks jurisdiction over me as a natural living man. I am not a fiction. But you, you're repeating yourself now. Well, I'm, I'm expressing the Clearfield Doctrine, which is in Black's Law Dictionary, Clearfield Trust versus the United States. I'm also expressing self versus Ray. That case was about a first degree murder. It has nothing to do with your situation. And Donovan versus um, Donovan versus Donovan administration and Rundell versus Delaware versus Rundell. More cases that are relevant to your situation, dude. Try again. But in the meantime, I'm going to stop it right here and continue on with the next one tomorrow. Because there's still plenty more of this fool left to get through. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.